You have to free yourself from this tree here, but you cannot untie or loosen the knots. That's impossible. It's not impossible. What? <laughs> I don't know what to do. All right. Okay, so watch this. I'll give you a little tip. What? You're getting, you're getting it, you're getting it. That's not doing anything. Give me your hand. Make a fist. Make a fist. Uh, 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 uh. <gasps> oh! Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> now, normally you would do this with two people, and it's really funny watching them like step in between their hands and all that stuff. Yay, you did it! <laughs> All you need is enough slack so that you can take this loop. You're going to pass it from the inside and then go around your hand. And now you can slip it out. Now you can also do the reverse puzzle and have somebody link themselves in. You'd have to take your loop and go from the back forward. There we go, just like that. And now I'll push my wrist through and then let the rope Link itself back in. For this puzzle, we're using a knot that creates a lot of friction. This is basically a triple overhand knot. I've also heard it called a barrel knot. And it can clamp down very tightly so that it doesn't let the rope slide through very easily. You'll take your rope and do a full turn with it. You wanna leave yourself enough room at the end so that you can coil it around three times. And so imagine if I were to go around once and then tie an overhand knot into my line. This would be a single overhand knot, if you can see it here. Same knot that you use to tie your shoes. Now, instead of going around one time and then tying it in, I'm gonna go around so that I have three. Now, every time I go around, I'm encircling this rope down below. So let's start again so you can see it. Here we go. I'm going to wrap once, twice, now three times. I have barely any left, but what I need to do is go through this window right here that you see with my finger in the back. I'll take this rope and I'll pass it through all the loops that I made. There we go. And now you can see it taking shape. And this slides to create our handcuff. But I'll put in all the pressure on the knot and then it'll be good to go. We'll do this on each side. And then I tied it the same way on the tree. But this is something that you would use with another person and the two people together would figure out how to unlink themselves. It's actually pretty uh, hilarious when you watch it happen. So now that we know how this works, let's take this principle and create a lock for my gate using the same concept. All right, let's draw a little sketch here so you can follow along with what we're building. Imagine this is our gate and this is the shackle that you would normally put your lock through. Now, instead of a lock, at least a traditional lock, I'm gonna make a pin with two holes in it. This hole over here is going to accommodate a standard lock, right? That's gonna be our diversion. And then we're gonna have a shackle cut out of steel, just like that. Through this hole, we're going to have a wire that goes through our gate shackle. It's going to go around the pin, back through, and then it's going to be crimped off right here. Okay. Now, if you can imagine, people will think that you need to undo this lock, when in all reality, all you need to do is take this wire, pass it through the shackle, around the lock, and then you're free. Our main pin for this lock comes from a tow hitch. 